Scenarios involving the expansion, compression, heating, and cooling of gases are those that deal with thermodynamic cycles. We're going to approach these problems by applying over and over again the first law of thermodynamics. This law is simple. It states that you can change the energy of the gas in one of two ways, either by heating it up or by doing work on it. And by work, we mean physically changing the volume of the gas, either by compressing it or letting it expand against its surroundings. Now, the conceptual distinction between work and heat is an important one, and it's a topic I'm going to table for the follow-up conceptual video, which is linked in the description of this video. Now, to start, we're going to visualize our problem by drawing a PV diagram, a pressure volume diagram. And here, we're just going to label the changes in pressure and volume throughout this thermodynamic cycle. The first leg is an adiabatic expansion. Adiabats are characterized by the fact that no heat passes into or out of the gas. On PV diagrams, adiabats sweep down and to the right or up and to the left. And this kind of makes sense. Without adding heat, the only way you can affect the energy of the gas is by doing work on the gas, by physically compressing or letting them expand, by changing their volume. If it's sweeping up and to the left, as its volume is decreasing, its pressure is increasing, which is basically a compression. If I add more pressure, the volume must decrease. The second leg is an isothermal compression. Isotherms are characterized by the fact that the temperature is constant, isothermal, single temperature. Isotherms also sweep down into the right and up into the left like adiabats, but they rise a little bit more gently. It's important to understand why they rise more gently in terms of the gas itself. And so this is a topic I'm gonna to table for the follow-up conceptual video again, which is linked in the video description here. Finally, the last leg is an increase in pressure at constant volume. Constant volume means, of course, you're not gonna change volume, so it's gotta be vertical. And because it's an increase in pressure, I know it's gonna go upward. And by the way, because it's an increase in pressure at constant volume, I knew to draw this isothermal leg a little bit below the adiabat. Now let's get to the questions. First, how much energy is transferred as heat during the third leg of the cycle? And is it transferred into or out of the gas? Now these thermodynamic problems require you to find work, heat, and energy at various points throughout the cycle. And then once you know these, you can solve for other quantities, things like temperature, degrees of freedom, etc. The whole point of the first law is that if you know two of these quantities, you can solve for the third, any given point in time. But there's something more. This gas is going through changes and it ends up exactly where it began. This fact means that not only are heat, work, and energy related at any given time, they're connected between time simply by virtue of the fact that this is all connected into a single closed loop cycle. So here's how we can exploit the fact that this forms a closed loop cycle. We're gonna use a trick that I call the thermodynamic Sudoku trick. It's not really a trick, it's more just a way to organize our data, but it'll allow us to fill in pieces of information using other pieces of information from different points in the cycle. Now to set it up, it's really simple. All you do is you label the ends of your cycle with A, B, C, and what I'm gonna do is just make a table. We're gonna add a column for each leg of the cycle and then a final column for the full cycle. And then one row for heat, one row for work, and then one row for internal energy changes. We're basically setting up our problem like a Sudoku puzzle, but with a different set of rules. There's three rules. The first rule is literally just the first law of thermodynamics, which says that the internal energy is the heat minus the work. So for any column, the first row minus the second row equals the third row. Second, this last column represents changes in heat, work, and internal energy of the gas in one full loop around the cycle. Each of these columns is one leg of that, so that means that the sum of the three columns is a third for any of these three rows. And then the third and final rule, which gives the trick its real power, is that the total internal energy change in one full cycle is zero. So on every one of these types of problems, whenever you use this trick, there's always gonna be a zero down here in the bottom right. And the reason is because internal energy, unlike heat and work, just depends on where you are in this space. It only depends on where you are in this PV diagram. So for example, if I start at A, and I gain some internal energy here, and then I gain some more here, I have to go back to where I started. If I didn't do that, then the value of the internal energy at A before and after that loop was different, which is not possible. This means that for any time you use the thermodynamic Sudoku trick, in this chart, you're always gonna have a zero in the bottom right. But be careful, it's only true for internal energy change, not necessarily for heat and not necessarily for work. You may have a total amount of heat intake throughout the cycle, this may be a positive number. You may have a total amount of work done by the gas, this may be a positive number. And their difference certainly has to be zero, but they may be non-zero numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in the chart. We're gonna use the values given in the problem, but also we know about particular types of processes that are happening in this cycle. The first process is that from A to B, we have an adiabatic expansion. 
Again, adiabatic means that no heat is transferred in or out of the gas. So I can go ahead and put a zero. And it also tells us in the problem statement that the gas does 1,000 joules of work on its surroundings between A and B. Now be careful here. I'm going to put positive 1,000 in this chart. This W stands for how much work the gas does on its surroundings, not how much work is done on the gas. If it was done on the gas, it would be a minus there. Okay, so now we can go ahead and just apply the first law of thermodynamics, which says that for this particular column, the heat minus the work must be the total internal energy change. Okay, so the charts, uh, the thermodynamic Sudoku trick is already kind of doing a little bit of work here. Let's skip the isothermal process and go to the last part, which is a constant volume pressure increase. Now, constant volume means the volume is not changing. You can only get work by changing volume. So if there's no volume change, there's no work being done. So for that third leg, there's no work being done there. Okay, next, what about the isotherm? On this leg, the temperature is constant, and this tells us something about the energy. When we increase the energy of a gas, either by doing work on it or heating it up, the molecules inside speed up. Both temperature and internal energy of the gas are essentially a measure of the average speed of these molecules. So in your mind, you should not think of temperature and heat as the same. Instead, you should think of temperature and internal energy as the same. And this is all embodied in the formula that the internal energy equals the number of molecules in the gas times the heat capacity times the temperature. These two variables right here are fixed for the gas. They're not going to change. What this essentially means is that the energy and the temperature of the gas are the same quantity, just in different units. So this is all to say that for this isothermal leg, isothermal again being single temperature, at a single temperature, because the temperature is not changing, the internal energy does not change. And this is a general feature of isothermal changes. The internal energy is constant, so the change is zero. So we can go ahead and write a zero for that leg. Okay, and so now we see the real power of the thermodynamic Sudoku trick. Because we know the internal energy change in these two legs and we know it in the full cycle, we can immediately fill in for that internal energy change in the third leg because the sum of these three must be the last column. So that means that the total internal energy change on that third leg must be 1,000 joules. And then we can once again apply the first law of thermodynamics to fill in 1,000 right here, which means, again, because these have to subtract to that quantity. And this means that uh, on this particular leg of the cycle, there was 1,000 joules of energy that was input into the gas. Okay, so now let's get to the second question. What is the heat transfer during the isothermal compression, during that second leg? Now, there is no general expression for heat transfer, but we can see that you know, we do have the internal energy change on that leg. And if we knew what the work done by the gas was on that leg, we could just fill in here to find out the, the heat transfer. So let's go ahead and write down the work in general is the integral of the pressure over the change in volume. Now, in general, pressure could be a complicated expression of volume, so you cannot always integrate this straightforwardly. But let's go ahead and just write the ideal gas law and plug it in here, and that gives you the integral of nRT over V times dV. Now the good thing is that for the isothermal compression, in this case, isothermal means that it's at a single temperature. Temperature is constant, so in that case you can bring temperature out of the integral. That's not always the case. For example, for an adiabatic expansion or compression, temperature is not constant, so you cannot bring it out of the integral. You've got to do something a little bit more sophisticated. When you bring it out of the integral, and then you integrate, you're going to have dV over V. The integral of that is a natural log of V. And if I do this from the initial to the final, and you combine the logs into the product, you get the following. In the problem, it says that the gas from here to here expands by 40%. Here, we're compressing it from B to C. We're looking at what happens from B to C. The compression means that it goes from an initial volume to a smaller volume, but this changes 40%. In equations, that means that if this is um, the final volume, the initial volume is 1.4 times the final volume. So you can write that as this. Again, the initial volume is bigger, and it's 1.4 times the final volume. So you get that guy. The final volumes cancel, so all you need is the values given to you in the problem. And when you plug it all in, you end up with a value of 629 joules. If you plug in here, you're going to get a minus sign, but let's just make sure that makes sense. In this case, you're compressing the gas, right? From B to C, the volume is decreasing, so you're compressing the gas. In this, uh, in this formulation, whenever the gas does work on its surroundings, the work is positive. And so that'd be an expansion. When you compress the gas, when you do work on the gas, it's negative. So in this case, it is negative. So you always want to double check the sign. And then finally, just apply the first law. This row minus that must equal the final. 
we get minus 629 joules of heat. And because it's minus, heat was taken out of the gas. 629 joules of heat were taken out of the gas on that leg. Okay, so the problem is done, but something may seem a little strange if you think about it. This is an isothermal compression. Like an isothermal means single temperature. So how is it that something that's maintaining its temperature is having heat removed from it? To me, that would naively suggest that when you take heat out of something, you would cool it down. The reason this makes sense is, again, the temperature is a measure of the average molecular speed and it's proportional to the energy of the gas. By the first law, the energy can be increased either by doing work or by adding heat. So if you just compressed it without removing any heat, the temperature would actually increase. The only way to keep it isothermal is to, while you compress it, is to also remove heat. So the only way to get this to be an isothermal process, to have a single temperature, is by compressing it and at the same time removing the same amount of heat that you added through the work. Okay, so that's it for the problem. We essentially solved a problem in which we were looking for heat transfers in a thermodynamic cycle. And you can apply this to any other thermodynamic cycles problem. It's kind of a way of just organizing information. And as you saw, it allowed us to fill in information when we had information from other parts of the cycle. And then finally, I want to remind you guys that there is a conceptual follow-up video which gets into the intuition and concepts behind some of the mathematics we talked about in this video. It's linked in the description of this video, so take a look and check it out.